Hello, I am Lux, and I was born with a terrible condition. It's called being me. <laughs> and I'm Ember. I came across a later condition, knowing him. Ouch. And this is our thoughts on Gravity Falls, Season 2, Episodes 1 through 5. Ah, <sighs> so, shall we begin? <laughs> What's the one thing I asked you not to do tonight? Raise the dead. And what did you do tonight? Raise the dead. Which is super funny because that's specifically what she said not to do. Mm-hmm. Also, actually, I got a better idea. L let's flip the script. Eat your brains. Yay. Nay. I'm getting some yay faces there. Ooh, Gossiping Housewives is on. Uh, no, I already sat down. <laughs> uh... I can relate to that, actually. It's a kind of a common thing. It's like, oh, but I just sat down. But this other thing. And with it coming from Zombie Seuss, it's even better. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, oh, stop it, Zeus. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, dudes. Need formaldehyde. And, ooh, cinnamon. Okay, apparently this whole episode might be us quoting the episodes. Oh, such good episodes. Very enjoyable. And so much happening. Stan has the three journals. He's working on something that's 30 years in the making. Government officials are involved. Mm, and I forgot to ask Google how old Stan was. Because he kicks tail for being how old he is. To use a term, he was really rad. Also bad. Seriously. Everything he does in that episode, smashing zombies. Okay, who's ready to die twice? Punching zombies' heads off with brass knuckles? Oh my god, that's dangerous and so cool. I mean, he just looks absolutely amazing in that whole section. Mm-hmm. They did a lot of nice hero shots with him. Yeah, pretty much tops him punching a dinosaur. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Last season, you ask yourself, well, how do you top that? The answer is, that's how. Punching zombies with brass knuckles. After a zombie just ate your baseball bat. Yes. And your assistant has been turned into a zombie going, Dudes, dudes, man, can I eat your brains? <laughs> Dude, I'm like the genius among these guys. Oh, pretty much. Though I have to wonder if Stan's going to have to re-steal journal number three. Because I don't think the photocopier would have picked up on invisible ink. If anything, it would have revealed it. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see. And the whole time Deborah is flipping through the book looking for more answers, looking for more answers, I'm like, why is nobody using the magnifying glass on the bookmark? It could be one of those things that when you look through it, it reveals something. Yes, especially if the glass has been treated in some way. Or it's not actually glass, it's one of those weird crystals. But... It's more than just a bookmark. It's got a magnifying glass on it. Does nobody find that interesting and important? They could just believe that it's just a magnifying glass. I would not take anything in the journal at face value, except for tips on how to not die. I yeah. would take those on at face value. Just good rule of thumb. Don't do this. Well, I'm going to go over there and do that. Why did I just die? Because you're an idiot. Valid answer. Valid answer. Can I get a do-over? Nope. Dang. No do-overs, no do-overs. Yeah, didn't pick up any extra lives while I was down there. That could probably actually be a thing in Gravity Falls. Possible. And just the three of them singing together, it was like... And Dipper's reaction of, oh my god, Mabel, what song did you pick? When we have him liking Icelandic pop music and girly top 40 songs, just because it's a little older doesn't mean that it can't be something that you sing along to, especially when your lives are at stake. Though I appreciate Stan's comment of, I don't know if our lives are worth this. <laughs> Valid concern. I, I don't know that I would equate that with a song, but, you know, there are some things that it's worth getting killed over. Also, I don't believe that was a perfect three-part harmony? No, especially considering that for a lot of it, they were singing separately. Mm hmm But when they were singing together, it was actually pretty dang cool. Yeah. Not just because of the exploding zombie heads. Yeah, which was so reminiscent of Mars Attacks. It was awesome. I really like the part where the zombie pulls off his own ears. Yes. 
is like, okay, apparently paranormal things are all sensitive to sound because we see the whistle work on the gnomes. We have the zombies with the three-part harmony and we have Bill Cipher with synth music. Mm, well, technically everything's vulnerable to sound. You just have to find the right frequency. Yes, I'm just saying that it seems to be somewhat of a recurring theme. Hmm. I don't remember anything about it, so don't ask me. I wasn't asking. I was making an observation. A very good observation. Shall we continue? Yeah, I don't think we should spend the whole episode on the first episode. Oh, and then there's that one episode with the shapeshifter. What a wonderful episode. I really like the little thing that Wendy does to give Dipper the hint of, I'm the real Wendy. Especially if you pay attention to other episodes. She's also done that before when talking to him. Yeah, they used it repeatedly as a signal between them for keeping secrets. Starting back when Wendy showed Dipper and Mabel her perch on top of the mystery shack. And they continued it in the haunted Mini Mart episode. So it was really a thing. The shapeshifter made a good guess, but Wendy's was, that's definitely her. No one else would know that. And that's a good thing to do. If you're ever caught in a situation where someone can shapeshift into someone else, I know, very unlikely. But if you are, it's good to know someone so well, especially when it's in a situation when it's rapid shapeshifting. They don't have a time to really know how the other person reacts or know secrets like that. It's the long term where you, I don't know if this person's been replaced for a while, or you're dealing with, oh, this is a double ganger from a slightly different dimension. <laughs> Yeah, where they're mostly similar. Though I would think that instead of the shapeshifter going for Wendy and causing the confusion that way for Dipper, it would have been a smarter decision for it to shift to Dipper and grab Dipper, leaving Wendy to make the decision. Because Dipper was closer to it. Mm. So there was less time to tell the two apart and make a reaction. Oh, and... Did you catch who voiced the shapeshifter? No, I didn't look that closely at the credits. You can actually tell by listening to his voice. Mark Hamill. That explains so much. Yep. And the voice was actually really close to the Joker. If you paid it close attention. Which kind of makes sense for a shapeshifter. Yes, it does. Okay, but actually back to the shapeshifter episode. Mm-hmm. This is the second supernatural creature that has warned Dipper that things are going to hit the fan. Because, I mean, that was pretty sucky. He's back in the container getting frozen. He's like, you have no idea what you're in for. Your future's going to be horrible, and this is going to be the last thing you see of yourself. And he transforms just in time to freeze horribly as Dipper. Mm-hmm. Freaky. Yes. Also, th this was a nice episode for Wendy being strong. She is really a kick tail, take names kind of girl, and they're giving more hints at who her family is. Isn't it obvious? It's been obvious, like, last season. Oh? The Lumberjacks? Good. Not a lot of people figured that out. No, it it is ridiculously obvious. Clear Back to at least the photocopy episode. At least that far back. Hmm. Because she shows the picture of her family. It doesn't get much more obvious than that. Yeah, but not a lot of people pay that close attention until they watch the episode like five or six times. But it was right there. Yeah, but things are very good at hiding right out in the open. <laughs> ah, anything else you want to talk about in this episode? A uh, nice score. Seuss getting the laptop. And, you know, wearing the jacket. And Seuss just being Seuss. Mm. I mean, they were, Dipper and Wendy were like, how do we know they aren't the shapeshifter? And they're just acting like themselves. Oh, yeah, definitely not the shapeshifter. Also, the shapeshifter is very smart. It knew they were down there, made noise in the distance, cast shadows to make it look like he was fighting himself, and then approached them as a human. Hmm. That thing was pretty freaking intelligent. Mm-hmm. The real question is, was the shapeshifter created, or was it natural for Gravity Falls? Because of where it was, that looked more like a creation lab than a fully just studying lab. Yeah, and the freezing pods reminded me a little bit of the cloning tubes. 
for mm. the boy band. Not that it had the same liquid or anything, but just overall feel to it. Mm -hmm. So could really be either way, but I would lean more towards created based on the underground lab, safe room, etc. That tends to imply you're working on science experiments. Hmm. So even if it was originally a Gravity Falls creature, you probably changed it into something else. So shall we move on to the next episode? <laughs> yeah, let's. Let's move on to mini golf. Oh my god, what a strange episode. When I first watched the episode, I was like, oh, okay. Little golf ball people in mini golf. Hmm. I'm tempted to find a mini golf course and get arrested by going, are there anything in here? Sir, why are you taking that apart? I swear, there's little tiny men who have golf balls as head who live in these things. Sir, would you back away from the equipment? I am going to find out. Sir, back away. Later. Ah, uh, yes, officer. He is a little bit nuts, but he's safe. Don't worry, he doesn't hurt anyone. And here's the bail for here's the bail money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, correction, Ember would go. So how much is the bail money? I don't know. Is he worth it? Um actually my my personal stance on that, and I've never been put to the test, and I hope I never will be, is that if you did something dumb enough to get arrested, you can stay there. <laughs> So, don't use your one phone call on me. <laughs> uh, is it you, Margaret? <laughs> uh, the bail for Mr. McBain, please. And uh, how much for the cuffs? <laughs> uh, well, at least everyone now knows our age. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've kind of given that away in a few episodes. Yeah, so apparently we had to go all Gulliver's Travels on the golf course. Also, character growth? The question is, will it stick? Hmm. Be mouth closed on that one. Yes, because we haven't seen Pacifica again since to see if she's less of a snot. Hmm. Is... Things seem to stick with Dipper and Mabel, so... With the series as a whole, because they make a lot of references back to things that have happened in the past. Yes, but, I mean, the character growth and learning experiences seem to stick. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the whole take on the Lilliputians and the feuding for basically a not really valid reason, and the mysteries of mini golf. Because, yes, there are times where it takes, like, five minutes for your ball to come out. I've never played. And I still can't fathom that. I've actually never played golf either. But my class did go on a golfing trip to our lo local golf course in our town. Yes, even though it's a small town, it had a golf course. It actually has a rather large golf course, surprisingly. Yes. Uh, small towns can have nice stuff. Yes, they can. Yeah. I can't believe that Lux hasn't played mini golf. I mean, I've gone mini golfing as an adult. It was a work thing, but hey. I haven't done much. <laughs> I lived in a small town in the middle of nowhere where I had a mountain as a backyard and a river as a front yard. And internet was dial up forever until we got satellite. And then it was metered. Yep. 10 gigabytes a month. God, that's so painful. You can't do anything with 10 gigabytes a month nowadays. Watch a YouTube video. Thanks for watching. Yeah, especially if it's in HD. You can eat up a gig of that. No problem whatsoever. But back to mini golf. So mini golf's kind of zany. So it makes sense that it's something Mabel would be good at. But I want to know, are these tiny little creatures at every mini golf course? Or is this just a Gravity Falls thing? I'm going to say just a Gravity Falls thing. And one thing that bothered me in this episode was the miners segment. Okay, yes, oh, there, yeah. there are times where your ball takes that long. And nice, the whole script flip, oh, what cute thing is going on here? And it's actually something incredibly dangerous that I think was also a movie reference. Mm-hmm, and depressing. Yeah, so I'm okay with the script flip. What I'm not okay with is why Mabel liked the that hole so much in the way it was handled because it was a delay why was that better 
and why go back and high five all of them and why would they be happy to high five when this person apparently just died i mean really that's that's uh, that's harsh yeah really harsh and then pacifica you know with all her advantages of being rich are there actual professional mini golfers is that actually a thing I'm guessing it probably is a thing. It probably is. Because there are pro versions of almost everything. To some degree. Cup stacking. Yeah. Rubik's Cubes. Children card games. On motorcycles. Yes. Standing perfectly still. No! <laughs> yes. I love how she finally gets all of... I'm not going to say it right. I'm not even going to try. Lepudians to band together by wanting to kill her. Also, how overboard the uh, Dutch ones take it with, oh, well, what's better than beating Pacifica? How about killing Pacifica? Yeah, that's a, that's a big logic leap right there. Yes. Well, if you read the original Gulliver's Travels, the feud between... The two nations basically had to do with what side of the soft-boiled egg they cracked open first. Yeah. Um, not to belittle your conflict or anything, but that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the Butter Battle book. Because You've the, brought this up before. Yes, the entire fight in the Butter Battle book is because those other people butter their bread with the butter side down. Is this one of the books that's going to end up in Ember's reading room? Check our listings. <laughs> Not unless we go out and buy it. I am surprisingly light on Dr. Seuss volumes. Ah. Also, please check out Ember's reading room. Not like it's not the most popular videos on our channel right now, which is so weird. <laughs> I think mainly the little golden books, and probably because those books are older, so there are more generations who may be familiar with them. Mm -hmm. Apparently they're searching directly for them. Interesting. Some the behind the scenes stuff, people. Enjoy! <laughs> that we should probably put to the end because we keep segueing a lot in this episode. I would like a segue. Those look like fun. Nah. <laughs> Alright. And the Lilliputian's assertion, assertion that the golf club is useless without their help it makes a perfectly fine weapon, thank you. Also, you guys look like golf balls. Like, I failed to see an issue here. Except for you, because we're both good at golf and... Well, even if I'm not good at golf, I can certainly swing a club. Yes. But if you notice, they were specifically putting. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I guess they have to putt up with them. I have some friends who would be very proud of my puns. Yes. And poor Sergei getting left behind. Sergei overboard! I'll get another one. And then we cut back to him in the credits. Watching the song and dance number that Dipper and Mabel didn't have to sit through. That it was probably the new and improved version. Because if you notice, there were representatives from multiple holes in the production. But that looked painful. I, I would go ahead and try to make my escape instead of asking, can I go now? It was like, um, okay, show's over. I'm going to be heading to the exit. Have a good night. Yeah, it's kind of like Fluttershy asking if she can tie you up. Do you realize how many fanfics there probably are of that? Oh, I know. I've read some. I mean, I did no such thing. Scoots his Kindle under the bed. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not eating tacos that you just randomly found in the back of the car. That seems incredibly unhealthy and dangerous. At the very least, it has lint on it. Oh yeah, especially in Stan's car. Yeah. Also, if you haven't noticed, I'm coloring in and making a cleaner copy of the Mabel drawing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they noticed by now, unless they're multitasking and only listening. So if you're only doing that, please, please take a look at the screen. Lux spends a lot of time working on these drawings. Yeah, especially coloring and inking. Okay, let's go on to the puppets. Woohoo! Puppets! Also, more Bill Cipher. Yes, it's Mabel's crush of the week. Mm-hmm. Who's... 
change. I would actually be perfectly okay with the mermaid at this point. Yeah, by comparison, um, yeah, I'm almost okay with the gnomes over this. <laughs> at least they aren't making out with their hands. Just squirrels. There was no making out. It was just a tub full of squirrels. But they jumped into his pants. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Uh, and Mabel, really, that's your idea? You know, because he says, oh, you can't really be into puppets unless you're doing puppet shows. Your counter is, I've never made my own. I want to learn so badly. Can't you teach me? Notice me, senpai. Come on. <laughs> uh, let's hope she doesn't turn into a yandere. <laughs> I am so sorry, everyone. That, that, that is a horrible, horrible image. It is. I just can't believe that Dipper was that fed up and that tired that he was willing to let Bill talk him into a deal. Yeah, but the laptop was going to be permanently erasing itself. Yes, it was. I was waiting for that for forever. I'm like, how many attempts do you get before it locks? Also, why did you need to take the laptop to a library to do that? That made absolutely no sense. You don't want anyone to see what's on the laptop or be curious about the laptop, so wouldn't you plug it in in the attic and play with it there? Because if you're trying to log on to it, you don't need to connect it to the internet. Mm -hmm. So you since it looks like an old enough laptop that it wouldn't have Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Well, it might have Ethernet, but I didn't see them plugging in an Ethernet cable. Right, so it seemed like the only purpose of them going to the library was so that Mabel could get her next crush. Story-wise, it doesn't make sense for them to have to take the laptop there. Unless they absolutely wanted to make sure that Stan didn't see it. Well, then just keep it in the attic. I don't think we've ever seen him up in their room. Uh, we've only seen him up in the room um, after everything in the episode was wrapped up. So, yeah, I still think that would have been the safer bet. Hmm. But yeah, always get the specifics when making a deal. Because you really think Bill was going to give a hint for the password for one puppet? Also, Bill totally did not fulfill his side of the bargain. He didn't give Dipper the hint. Nope, he just destroyed the laptop. Yes, which was allowable under the terms of the deal. He just needed to give Dipper the hint. It would have been useless because the laptop was destroyed, but he would have fulfilled his part of the bargain. Hmm. Well, maybe he did give Dipper the hint, but it wasn't clear to any of us. Entirely possible. And, you know, as soon as Bill told him that thing about needing a corporeal vehicle, I thought he was going to go around possessing people. And since there were puppets, I was figuring on a puppet possession at some point. But I didn't see him actually having to do the whole hand puppet thing as if he was still his regular human self. It was funnier that way, though. Oh, definitely funny. Just, again, not what I was expecting. Because, you know, usually to possess something is to fully inhabit it. So I was expecting that he would cram himself in entirely into the sock puppet version of himself. We'd no longer see the ghost self, and the sock puppet version would just be floating around yelling at Mabel. And that play looked painful. I don't understand why anyone besides Gabe was interested. I would have liked to have seen it in its entirety. I also like the twist on the, oh, everyone will believe this is just part of the play. And everyone going, boo, this is horrible. And Gabe going, we are so done. And I love how Mabel goes, I think I just dodged a bullet on that one. Yeah, no kidding. Also, Mabel, Biscotti is not a car. <laughs> just to make sure it's some type of dried bread, right? Or toasted bread. Yes, uh, bread or cake often covered with nuts or chocolate that you commonly dip in coffee. Hmm. I vaguely remember something. Does biscotti basically translate to second day bread or something? Probably. My Italian's a little rusty. Hmm. hi oh wasabi. Hello, mustard. My Japanese is a little rusty. <laughs> Name that movie in the comments below. <laughs> Please do, because I actually can't. I give you a hint. Me and my brother can have a conversation with it. Oh, third movie. That's why it didn't click. I only watched the first two into the ground. So, yeah, that was ouch on the play. It's like, Mary Sue much. I'm a wonderful girl, but what's a perfect girl without a perfect mate? What kind of message is that? Yeah. And then, Gabe, 
All right, let's get together. I love you. I must go to war. Come back from the war. I've been terribly injured. Let's make out. <laughs> that is basically all I got out of that. And it was nice to see Mabel giving up something for Dipper. Because they were right. You go through all the clips, it's usually Dipper making the sacrifices. I mean, he even let her keep her millimeter. Mm -hmm. Got fired from the pool job. Saved her from gnomes. She didn't remember it, but also saved her from the ghosts. I love how Bill was finding out that a human body can't run on empty. Yep. Oh, what? What is this feeling? Oh, I feel... Oh. <laughs> yeah, you've been awake for like 36 hours. And then Dipper gets his body back. Oh, this feels as underwhelming as I remember. Ow, what did he do to my body? Mabel, I think I need to go to a hospital. <laughs> yeah. By the looks of it, he hit everything he could on the way over because he was slamming his hand in a drawer. He was hitting, he was just doing stuff that caused the body pain because apparently Bill Cipher likes pain because he finds it funny. Yes, because he's not used to physical sensation, so he doesn't have the connection of. Also, not really my body, doesn't matter. I'm a being of pure energy. Once I'm done with this, I'm gone. And then the last of five that we watched. Oh my. That whole, I could actually see a Japanese dating sim playing out like that. Also, speaking of yandere. I was just going to say, oh my god, she is a yandere. No, you can have no one but me. Also, fun fact, the script for that episode was written a couple of years before Five Nights at Freddy came out. Yes, back before animatronics coming to life and attacking you wasn't the huge franchise that it is now yep plushies movies uh, and i recently heard the thing that the movie may actually be on hold for an indefinite period of time yeah well we still have the first four games plus uh fnaf world plus sister location plus the book mm -hmm. go back to the wonderful episode of zeus tating a video game yes it's like yeah if the why would the game be returned with destroy at all costs? You couldn't bring yourself to do it? Or they couldn't figure out a way to destroy it. The Zeus tossed it in a fire? Maybe that person couldn't figure that out. He tried snapping it, he tried other things, he didn't think of burning it. Yeah. Also, we don't know how uh, Yandere she got on everyone else. Hmm. Because obviously Tiffany gets a little obsessed because as she said, the programmers made her, designed her to be interested in everything that the person playing the game says. Also, they very clearly indicated that she murdered the programmers. I think they also did a little portal referencing. Referencing the game's portal because the way the engineers looked, looked a lot like the animated avatars they used for demonstration videos and stuff like that for the portal series. Oh, could be. And... It was just very interesting, the progression of the storyline of, you know, both um, Tiffany's attachment to Seuss and Seuss's attachment to Tiffany. Because, you know, he played the game wrong and he got try again. He's like, oh, there's do-overs. I can keep doing this until I get it right. Oh, this is fun. This is easy. This is not intimidating. As can be part of the draw of dating sims is you get all this interaction without actually having to deal with the complications of real humans. Humans are very complicated. Yes. And then because he's gotten this confidence by playing the game with Tiffany, he's able to speak with the other woman at the mall and have a casual conversation and pick up a phone number. Mm hmm I think that's also because of how she was, how she approached him. She was actually the one to approach him. And it wasn't him approaching a girl. So he wasn't engaged in that, oh, I have to be a certain way to this girl. The girl approached him, and he wasn't even thinking that, oh, this is a girl. He was just thinking, oh, this is a nice person who's talking to me. Oh, we're interested in the same things. Oh, cool. Yes, which is how things should go. Gender doesn't really fall into it. Like, be nice to people, have a nice conversation. For the most part, they're not horribly intimidating, and they may be as scared of you as you are of them. So... You know, and then he's like, oh, this is a real person that I'm hanging out with. 
And he doesn't see it as cheating on Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Because he's not necessarily seeing it, either of them, in a romantic light. Mm -hmm. He's just enjoying their company. I also like the thing at the end. So I get to talk with a girl through a screen or something like that. I can't remember exactly how he phrased it. I was like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, uh, basically a long distance relationship that'll be almost exactly like the video game, but without the obsessive, she's following me everywhere and possessing electronics to be with me. Mm -hmm. I also like Stan's little arc in the background. Yes, with the outdated anima I can't even really call it animatronic, but the outdated mechanical piece. Mm -hmm. I love how creepy it was when at the beginning it basically screamed in pain and all the ink and oil came out of it after the kid put the, after Stan, I should say, took the coin from the kid and put it in the machine at the beginning. Yeah, that was very disturbing. And then you have it biting Stan and him throwing it away in the dumpster. That was not his dumpster, which totally makes sense for Stan because avoiding the trash fees. Mm -hmm. That's a total Stan thing. Unfortunately, lots of people do that. Mm -hmm. All it does is drive up the cost for the individual or business that you dump the trash into. And then he spends all his time trying to get this animatronic. And apparently, for some reason, Tiffany needed to and was able to possess all the animatronics. And even though she hadn't seen Stan at all, she still needed to kill Stan. I, I think she just put that thought in all of them. And that one just happened to be backstage and Stan happened to be nearby. Well, Stan was kind of uh, stealing it. Yeah. So I'm just saying that's what happened. She didn't specifically go after Stan. She just told the animatronics after she took over all of them to go after any human nearby. That's not Zeus. And if he is Zeus, bring him to me. It was just kind of strange, though, overall, because she was specifically possessing one of them. Mm -hmm. But she was managing to control all the others. She didn't really need all of them. I mean, once the restaurant was cleared out, all she needed to deal with was Zeus. And, you know, you just get a hold of one hostage and then play the hero's gambit. Basically, Zeus has to stay so that she'll release the hostage. So you give in, get the hostage release, and then backstab. Also, Zeus's Abelita. Okay, first, the guilt trip of get a girlfriend before I die. <laughs> Harsh. Th that usually comes from the mothers, not the grandmothers, but we don't know where the rest of Zeus's family is, what happened to them. Mm -hmm. And then that just nice little, oh yes, I'll be in heaven with the angels. And Grandpa? No, he is not there. <laughs> it's like, okay, so which interpretation is that? Is that Zeus's grandfather is still alive? Or is that the more common interpretation of Zeus's grandfather is not in heaven because he's in the other place? Mm -hmm. Where they're playing into the old trope of old married couples hating each other. Hmm. Which I do not get. It, it seems to truly be a thing. Especially the further back you go, because, you know, people got married earlier, because there was an expectation to get married, and there was an expectation that thou shalt not divorce. Or, Abelita really liked her husband, but knew he wasn't a very um, honest man. So she knows, like, yeah, he's not going to be in heaven. There is also that, the whole stand by your man thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there is a possibility that she knew and liked him anyways because love has no logic unfortunately mm. life would be much easier if logic and love got along <laughs> and then you know the whole ending with stan going to vegas with goldie really how can he just take off like that who's watching the shop or is this all just one night in vegas uh but also maybe mabel yeah in, in theory. Uh, so any more thoughts or should we wrap things up? Really interesting. You know, a lot of little pieces have been scattered throughout these five episodes. So it'll be interesting to see how they tie back and what they lead up to. Though now that we have completed season one, I do know the portion I was spoiled on did come from season two. And most likely the finale. We'll have to see. 
Well, I can't wait to see more with Ember and watch her reactions to it because things are about to get really interesting in the next five episodes. Does anyone else find it creepy that he keeps watching me? Okay, I do it out of the corner of my eye since I'm also watching the very good program. And this has been our thoughts on Gravity Falls, Season 2, Episodes 1 through 5. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Leave a comment, share with friends, and check out other videos. If you'd like to see more of Lux's art, you can check it out on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Able to support us financially and willing to do so? Check out links for Coffee and Patreon.